Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. We're here with Bill Jordan, and uh, boy, it's uh, getting close to the end of the year. Uh, how are you doing, Bill? <laughs> I'm doing great, guys. Hope you are. Hope you had a great holiday season, Christmas and Hanukkah and all that stuff. And here we are. We're still standing. All right, uh, Bill, I'm going to be this uh, New Year's Eve. I'm going to be using my mug with a little bit of uh, Irish whiskey in it. Uh, not nice coffee, touch. Not coffee the way I usually do, but Irish whiskey. Right. I might put some coffee and Irish whiskey together. So it, 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 my wife and I were talking about, do you want to do anything for New Year's Eve? And uh, right. it, it came up to, the, we had a good laugh over that because we haven't done anything for New Year's Eve in 30 years, you know. What is it we used to do? We'd, we'd go to parties and stay up till two o'clock in the morning and, uh, you know, wake up really, really late with the kids screaming. Uh, but, you know, as we got older, it just didn't hold the same, uh, same, same appeal for us. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, there's nothing. If you're party, if you're party type, you know, like that, that's great. And we've done that in the past. We used to hang with some. Uh, we'd go to a Greek restaurant in Raleigh, and we'd ring in the New Year with our Greek friends. And it it was kind of comical because, it, and, and they they will tell you this. I, I love our Greek friends, and uh, but it's like they're not really too finicky about what time it is. <laughs> So, so there would be maybe a countdown to midnight, maybe not. It might be a countdown to twelve thirty. It might be a count. I mean, who knows? Uh, but when you leave there, you're into the new year. So we like it when we're with parties, but we haven't been to a New Year's Eve party in I don't know two, three years, something like that. I like them if we're there, and I like them if we're just here at home and having a quiet evening. And if I go to sleep, I go to sleep. I think last year, I, you know, didn't wait for the ball to drop. There's nothing special about it. Um, there's no prize for staying up till midnight. And then the next day, you know, here we are with a new year. So I know a lot of people are glad to see 2020 in the rear view mirror. Yeah. I don't think there's anything magical about 2021 that it can't continue to be challenging. Um, 2020 has just been a challenging year in a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. Um, but I don't think the universe conspired to make 2020 bad for people. It's just the way it's worked out. But, yeah. but that being said, I am very, very positive about 2021. But, I do feel uh, I, very positive. I, I, have to, I have to say, uh, hearing what you're doing, Bill, is that the last time uh, New Year's Eve uh, uh, was a really uh, special night to wind up wanting to stay up for was Y2K. Because I wanted to see if my watch would blow off my hand and if uh, <laughs> the world would stop spinning. And then yeah. after that, it, it slowly became uh, a situation where uh, we'll start watching, uh, especially living in California, you, you, you're you not going to wait up to midnight to watch the ball drop. Well, that's silly because you can watch it at like nine o'clock at night. And exactly. Uh, so the big thing around our house, we used to go to a movie with a uh, friends in the late afternoon, they go out to dinner uh, as we began to slide into the last uh, 10 or 15 years, and then maybe go back to one of our houses for dessert and midnight would happen. But now by nine o'clock, I'm more than happy to say, you know, if it hasn't happened without me, then don't wake me in the morning. And uh, my wife waits up to speak to the kids. So that's her tradition. Uh, so it's not a bar humbug, but, you know, running around and driving late at night on New Year's Eve is not something that excites me anymore. Right, right. Well, you know, if, it, if you've got a good party going and people want to have a party, uh, we probably wouldn't be, you know, we're not hosting one this year. Uh, but to go out to friends, that's a great time. Now, we have hosted New Year's Eve parties, and it's kind of goofy. We would have, uh, I, years ago, I declared an Austin Powers Film Festival. So we just watched all the Austin Power movies on DVD up until midnight, and then we watched the ball drop, and everybody went on their way. Or they stuck around. I mean, we've had New Year's Eve parties that wrapped up at 3, 3.30 in the morning. So uh, I used to hang with that. It just, you know, it's like anything else. It just depends on who you're with. If you're around great people that make you feel good, then, you know, wear it out, man. Have a great time. Yeah, I don't think it It really, our attitude towards uh, New Year's Eve doesn't really change just because we're getting older. I don't think. Well, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think that 
we're used to having the year actually show up and then uh, start trying to figure out, do we put the right date on the check? Uh, <laughs> it used to take me a month now. Oh, it's, yeah. It's not such a big deal anymore. I figured it out. Okay, you just write a different number there. And January, so it doesn't have the same excitement and the same, like, something magical is going to happen. It's like every day for me is the beginning of a new year. So it's a, <laughs> as, a, as the movie said, it's a wonderful life. It really is. So uh, yeah, to me, it New, is. Year, New Year's Eve is, is, quite frankly, is nothing special. It's not particularly a family day like a Christmas or right. uh, uh, Hanukkah or a Passover or Easter. Right. So to me, it's just sort of like another day. And if you, depending upon uh, what, uh, we, well, I guess most of us are on uh, uh, the current calendar, but uh, there are some people that start the New Year's another day. There's a Chinese New Year, right? That, to me, that's a, like a that's fun true. event. That's true. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, there is one thing, and I haven't checked on it. You guys are reminding me. There is something to do on uh, New Year's Day that my wife and I always do on New Year's Day, but I haven't checked the TV schedules, and that is the Sci-Fi Channel will show a Twilight Zone marathon. Ooh. Ooh. And that's what we and that's what we and that's what we do on okay. on New Year's Day. So there is in fact, there is in fact something special on New Year's <laughs> that I've overlooked. And eat and eat <laughs> and sleep. Oh yeah. Now that that is a holy tradition that's worth continuing. Mm. Yeah. Great. Bill, do you have the last word for us? Well, uh can I hold the mug up again cuz I'm yeah. gonna Sure. There it is. <laughs> So, you know, okay. with the new year coming or whatever it might be, and this is, you know, Embrace the Boom is directed to baby boomers. If you were born between 1946 and 1964, you are, by definition, a baby boomer. So the idea is not to just run out the clock. We still have goals to set and reach, and we still have dreams to dream, to live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. That's the idea. So lots of and, life left to live. And Happy New Year, Bill. Happy New Year to you guys. Thanks for having me on again. Be well. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.